Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to Eureka Math. This is Module 1, Lesson 8, and we are still working on rounding, okay? So our objective today is to round a given decimal to any place using place value understanding and the vertical number line. So in Lesson 7, we practiced using that vertical number line. Right, so we took a regular number line and we just turned it on its side. So if I have an arrow going this way and an arrow going that way, we picked a number, let's say 3.589, three and 589 thousandths, and we learned how to round it up or down depending on what we're doing. So if I want to round to the nearest hundredth, Right, that would either be 3.59 or 3.58, right? So how do I decide 3.58 and 3.59? Well, I look at the thousandths place, okay? And if it's a nine or five, six, seven, eight, or nine, then it, we round up. And if it's anything below a five, so a four, three, two, or one, or zero, we round down. So this is a nine, that means we're gonna round up. So if we were to round three and 589 thousandths to the hundredths place, it would be three and 59 hundredths, okay? So uh, we're just gonna keep working on this today. We're rounding, rounding decimal points and knowing our place values, okay? So thousandths, hundredths, tenths, super important for this. Let's go to the problem set, write your name on the page. And it says, write the decomposition that helps you, then round to the given place value. That just means what's the best technique that you have for finding how to round, okay? They gave us some charts yesterday. I prefer the vertical number line, so I'm going to use the vertical number line. Draw number lines to explain your thinking. Circle the rounded value on each number line. So here's our number. Here's my number line, okay? And in the middle, I've got 32 and 697 thousandths. And it's telling me to round to the nearest tenth, hundredth, and one. So I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth first because that makes the most sense to me because I want to work my way from the outside in. So if I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth, which is this space, I have to look at that space. Okay, so above it would be 32, and then this would become 0, and that would become 7. Okay, that's the next hundredth, right? There's 69 hundredths here, so 70 above and 69 below. And I'm going to look at the thousandth space to decide am, am I going to go up or down. Remember, 0 to 4 goes down. 5 to 9 goes up, and that's a 7, so I'm going to go up, okay? So that's my nearest hundredth. Then my nearest tenth, and there's my number in the middle again. My nearest tenth is the second number, so the next number up from that would be 7. Okay, and the, or the stay the same, okay? So stay the same or go up. And in order to decide whether I'm going to go up or go down, I'm going to look at the hundredth spa space and see that it's a nine, so remember nines go up, and there's my answer. And finally, the nearest one. And there's my chosen number in the middle. And the nearest one would be 33, or here, 32. And in order to decide that, I'm going to look at the tenth space, and it's a six, so sixes go up, and there. So we round it up in every case. All right, next one. So tenth, hundredth, ten, and hundred. So let's start with hundredth. And then go, so I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to go here, and then here, and then here. So I'm going to have four lines. And in the middle goes my number, 141, 
and nine hundred and ninety nine thousand. Oh my goodness, all those nines. <gasps> Wish they hadn't done that. That's going to get complicated. Okay, so ninety nine hundredths. My next number up from that would be a hundred, right? So a hundred plus that would be one forty two and zero zero. And the next number down would just be 14199. Okay. And in order to decide, I'm going to look at this 9. Remember, 0 to 4 go down, 5 to 9 go up. And that's a 9, so we're going up. Next, I'm going to do to, to the tenths. Okay, in the middle is. One four one nine nine nine. There's my number, and the next tenth that nine would go up again. It would be one forty two zero, and this would stay the same. Okay, so I'm going to look at that hundredth space, which is right there. Before I looked at the thousandth, now I'm looking at the hundredth, and it's a nine, so I'm going up. Next, my hundred space, I'm sorry, my tens. And in the middle, I'm going to put one, four, one, nine, nine, nine. And the next ten going up, right? So that's 141. The next ten would be 150, right? 150. And going down, it would be 140. All right. And so how am I going to decide the tens? I'm going to look at the one spot. There's my one, right? And the one is just a one. So I'm actually going to go down this one, and I'm just going to settle in at 140. Okay, 141 is closer to 140 than it is to 150. And finally, the hundred spot in the middle is 141, 999. And the next 100 up from that is 200. See, 1 to 2. And here we're just going to stay the same, 100. Okay. So now I'm going to look at the 10 spot, which is a 4. Okay. So that means that 141 and 999 thousandths is closer to 100 than it is to 200. Okay. Getting easier? I hope it is. Number 2. A root beer factory produces 130, uh, 132,554 cases in 100 days. About how many cases does the factory produce in one day? So we're going to take this number. We're just going to answer this first part first. If that's how many it produces in 100 days, we're just going to divide by 100. And you remember how to do that. Remember, this is also known as 10 times 10. It's also known as 10 squared. So a little review there. All right, and that means I'm going to move that decimal point over one, two spaces, which is going to give me 1, 3, 2, 5, and 54 hundredths. So... That's my answer, but now it wants me to round my answer to the nearest tenth, okay? So there's my answer. I'm going to use my number line. One, three, two, five, five, four. And I'm going to round to the nearest tenth. So if this is the tenth, the next tenth up would be that. And if we stayed the same, it would be that, right? So we're going to look at this number, 4. So 4 means we go down, and the nearest tenth is right there. There's my answer. Okay, but you, it is a two-step problem. The first step was to divide this, right? And then the second step was to round, so dividing and rounding. And when we have our test this week, there are going to be a lot of two-step problems on it. So read things carefully. How many cases does the factory produce in one day? Well, that's your first problem. And your second problem is to round. So if you came up with this, that's not the final answer. Okay. 
Number three. A decimal number has two digits to the right of its decimal point. Okay. If we round it to the nearest tenth, the result is 13 and 7 tenths. Okay. What is the maximum possible value of this number? Okay. So, it didn't round up. It rounded down. So whatever this number is, it's got to be between those two numbers. Right? And it's got to be less than, it's got to be the same here. And this number, this tenth number, what's it going to be? If it's a five, it would have rounded up. If it was a four, it would round down. So that number must be a four. Must be. The maximum possible value. It could have been a three or a two or a one, but it's asking you for the maximum possible. Okay? So, use words in the number line to explain your reasoning. Include the midpoint in your number line. So that's what our answer is. Mm -hmm. And 13 and 74 hundredths is the maximum possible value because any higher would round up and any lower wouldn't be the maximum, right? Okay. B, what is the minimum possible value of this decimal? What is the minimum possible value of this decimal? Hmm. Is it saying the same? Okay. So it's saying the same, so that would be 13.7 and 13.8. And we know that it can be anywhere between those, but it has to have two decimals. So this would be 13.7, and the maximum is 4. So what's the minimum going to be? 0. Right, because 0 still rounds down. 13 and 70 hundredths is the minimum possible value. Wait a minute, let's read this again. A uh, decimal number has two digits to the right of the decimal. If we round to the nearest tenth, the result is 13 and 7 tenths. Nope, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that back. I'm going to take this back. That would be if it was above 3.7. However, they've given, they haven't put any numbers in there for a reason. And I want to show you what that is because I gave you the wrong answer. I gave you the right answer if we were saying anything above, round it down. However, they didn't say that. They said that they came up with three and seven tenths. So we know the maximum possible value for that could be 13 and 74 hundredths. But the minimum possible value could actually be 13 and 60 five hundredths. Now, do you see why? Because this five means that it's going to round up. Okay? So from the bottom to the top, this whole range would round to three and seven tenths. So the minimum possible value is 13 and 65 hundredths. They almost got me on that one. You have to be careful. Okay? All right. So rounding, rounding, rounding. If you're still struggling with rounding, practice, 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 practice. Okay? The test is coming up. This is the last lesson before the mid-module exam. That means We've got a day to figure all this stuff out, okay?
Let me know if you have questions. Have a great day.